Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freita. While the August 2013 beating death of Mario Dean, who was fatally injured while in custody at the Barnet Street Police Station in Montego Bay, St. James, generated local and international attention and was primarily responsible for the decriminalization of ganja in Jamaica. There was a similar case in Chilani a year later, but whereas Mario Dean was arrested for being in possession of a ganja spliff, the Chilani victim, Kamosa Clark, was mentally ill, but instead of being given psychological help, he was placed in custody at the Falmouth Police Station, where he allegedly engaged some police officers in a fistfight and was brutally beaten. He subsequently died from his injuries. In Mario Dean's case, his situation was really a mockery of the local justice system, since he was denied bail simply because a police officer allegedly overheard him saying that he did not like the police and stopped processing his bail application saying he needed a little more punishment. So he was placed back into the cell. Back in the cell, Dean was brutally beaten, a beating that resulted in his death. Three mentally ill inmates and three police officers were charged in connection with his death which came three days after the beating at the Cornwall Regional Hospital on Independence Day 2013. However, while the three mentally ill inmates were deemed unfit to plea and were released into the custody of their respected families, the case with the three police personnel has been like a slow boat to China slowly meandering through the courts for the past 10 years without no resolution in sight. Had it not been for the yearly one woman vigil by Mario Dean's mother, Marcia Fraser, who has been turning up outside the Barney Street Police Station on the anniversary of his death each year demanding justice, the matter might well have been forgotten. In the case of Clark, it was another case of showing up the system as not been prepared to deal with the challenges posed by mentally ill persons, while showing that the state had not learned anything from a similar incident in Kingston when another mentally ill man, a Ghana Barrett, was beaten to death in police custody. Compound the situation with the death of Clark, like in the case of Maria Dean, case against the policemen implicated in his killing has been going through the court system at a snail's pace as the incident slowly fades from memory. In this edition of Lest You Forget, I will be looking back at the circumstances surrounding the death of Kamosa Clark from a story I wrote for the Gleaner which was published on November 5, 2013 under the headline Alleged police beating victim at big dreams, says brother. The story was written just days before Clark, who was left in a vegetative state after the beating, died at the Cornwall Regional Hospital in Montego Bay, where he was transferred from the Falmouth Hospital. The doctors have given up all hopes, said Leo Varley Thomas, the brother of Camosa Clark, the mentally ill man who is now in a vegetative state after an alleged beating at the hands of the Falmouth police three weeks ago. In fact, after seeing his brother covered in bandage with surgical tubes sticking out of his nostril and throat at the Cornwall Regional Hospital in Montego Bay, Thomas has also given up hopes. I am sure he's going to die sooner than later, said Thomas, whose 31-year-old brother was a normal man with big ambitions prior to becoming mentally ill two years ago. He was a hard-working man before he got ill, recalled Thomas. He worked at several hotels, including the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. He was an ambitious man with big dreams. In addition to making a mark in hotels, Clark was also an accomplished sportsman, representing William Nib High School in the Costa Cup football competition while he was a student there. He was a goalkeeper for the William Nib Costa Cup team in the 1990 and 91 seasons. After he left school, he went on to present Invaders FC in the Chilani Major League, said his brother. According to Thomas, things went downhill for his brother two years ago when he began acting strangely, declaring that he was God. With his behavior becoming increasingly erratic, Clark reportedly had a regular dispute with his baby daughter's mother. 
It was one such dispute that landed him behind bars at the Falmouth lockup. When he first began acting strange, we sought medical help for him, but it did not work, said Thomas. After appearing in court in a previous dispute with his baby mother, the judge ordered the police to have him mentally examined, but the instruction was not followed. While he is still unsure as to why his brother was allegedly beaten, Thomas said he heard he had punched a policeman who was trying to force him back into a cell. I understand they were beating him and trying to force him back in a cell when he punched a policeman, giving him a black eye and a split lip, said Thomas. I don't know if that is true, but the police were quite aware that he was mentally ill. They knew he was sick, said Thomas. To say he fell off a bench and suffered the injuries I saw is nonsense. I want a full investigation because I want justice for my brother. Following the intervention of Indicom and a thorough investigation into the death of Clark, five police officers were arrested and charged in connection with his death. The five police officers were identified as District Constable Alwyn Eccleston and Onika Brown, Sergeant Derrick Henry and Constables Desmond Lawrence and Tristan Turner. Eccleston, Brown and Henry were charged with murder while Lawrence and Turner were charged with neglect of duty. The last I heard of the case was sometime in 2019 when three of the police officers appeared in court, but to the best of my knowledge, the matter remains unresolved. However, in looking back at the incident, I just can't help but feeling that this was another case where the system failed a person who needed help. As tragic as the situation was, it was one of those unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica. Unforgettable stories out of Western Jamaica from the scrapbooks of Adrian Freita. Before you go, please remember to subscribe. <laughs>